threatened her verbally and physically for years. The first time we met her, she was 21 years old and she was still living with R. Kelly. We spoke with her again yesterday. It's her first interview since the trial. Come on in, Ezra. Well, you look good. Thank you. So do you. Let me see. I'll just start with this. I'm really glad to see you again because I wasn't sure I'd ever get to talk to you again. Mm. I'm very happy to be here and, and see you again as well. It feels like a full circle moment to me. When we first met Azriel Clary in March of 2019, she had been living with our for almost five years and was one of his fiercest supporters. Because you guys don't know the truth, you guys. I believe it's a facade that our guys are saying. This is all lies for money. Clary and another woman, Joycelyn told us then that they were in a relationship with the old R&B singer. But Clary left the interview and she shared with Kelly in Chicago seven months after our interview. I was lost and um, I, was, I felt in and, and you know, I, I gave someone that control over me mm -hmm. uh, to basically make me do whatever it was that they wanted me to do and act however they wanted me to act. During R. Kelly's trial, she testified that he began Actually abusing her when she was just 17 years old. At the time of the interview with us, were you afraid when you were getting there talking to us? I was. He did his interview first. I can do this stuff. This is not me. I'm fighting for my life. No, this. He came in and he told us to be angry and be upset and she's gonna try to do this and you're gonna- And we told you that. Yes, and and so we were, we came in angry. We so he told in. you be angry. Yes, and um, I was scared because I was like, I don't want the world to see me, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. I don't, I'm loving, I'm caring, I'm compassionate. Mm -hmm. And um, no one got to see that side of me. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because your dad called me after and said, that is not my daughter. That is not who she is. That is not how she speaks. That is not what she believes. And during the trial, you testified that uh, you said, I was not honest in the interview that you did with us. Yeah. What, what were you not honest about? Everything. Everything. Everything, yes. You, you know, before that interview, um, you know, he had us practicing every single day. Practicing what? Answering questions. And if he didn't like our answer, he would tell us exactly what to say and how to say it. So anytime you mention wow, anything, Asriel, yeah. I'm just, I'm stunned by this. <laughs> yeah. So, so anytime you mention, go. Anytime you mention anything about sexual preference, we already know to say, I'm not here to talk about that. Because that's what he told us to say every single time. That's exactly time. what you said. First Between of all, I'm not you? here to talk about my personal life. Okay. And I would never share with no one what I do in or outside of the bedroom. So when the interview was over and you all go back to his apartment, the three of you, what is the conversation? He was so happy. He was happy? He was so happy. He was like, you guys did amazing. You know, you did so well. You carried yourself so well. I believe he even, like, got food and wanted to celebrate. That's how happy he was with that interview. And I was just there like, wow. What did he think about how he came across in the interview? Uh, truthfully, he think, I think he, he believed that he had, he done, he had done well. He, he felt like he had really, uh, did a, made a great reflection of himself and where he was in life and how all these women were lying on him and how all these people were just, you know, out to get him and, you know, that sympathy card that he just loves so much. Did you ever have conversations when he wasn't around to say, this is not good, this is not healthy, we got to get the hell out of here? Did you ever have any conversations I like feel that? like a lot of people tried, but everyone always got beat over it because he was very good at manipulating the situation. So even if he knew or not, he would basically say, he could come in his room right now and he would say, you know, I've already spoken to Joy. She already told me exactly what you guys have been talking about. You have five minutes to be honest or you're going to be thrown around this entire room. Mm -hmm. Everything that we were living in had become very normal. And um, to, I had to break out of that. I had to 
realize that this is actually abnormal. Yeah, the dysfunction was so prevalent that after a while it did feel normal to you? It did because it was not only me, it was other women, other women who were older than me. You know, when I met him at 17, he had four other women. And so these women are all normalizing his actions and then you have assistants normalizing his actions and you have workers and security and everyone else that normalizes it. So you, me being very young at that time, I just learned to normalize it. What do you think anybody could have said or done to help you leave the situation sooner? Nothing. 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 I feel like that is something that I would have had to have woken up for myself, something that I would have had to realize on myself. And, you know, a lot of people don't realize with victims, the more you try to help them, the more it upsets them sometimes, you know? Your interview stands out because you were one of the few who we've heard who defended him so vocally and so adamantly and now ends up testifying against him. Well, your testimony was very key, mm. Azriel, it was very key. It was very graphic, it was very painful. Some of it was so graphic, the judge wouldn't even allow it to be, re be released um, yeah. to the public. And I'm wondering what it was like for you sitting there, uh, looking at him while you're testifying about what your life had been like with him. I feel like it was, it was very disturbing um, to have to relive those moments. And um, I don't know. <clears throat> Man, yeah, I know this is an old video, but of course the shit is still ongoing. And as y'all see, y'all don't see Jocelyn, Jocelyn, I believe that's her name. Savage. Y'all don't see her frame next to it on this interview. So, presumably, I think it's just her, you know, speaking out about the situation. On, Of course, it's just her on this interview right here speaking out the situation. So, now drop your comments below. Let me know what y'all think about this. Um, They're still speaking about this situation. I think she's supposed to be testifying against R. Kelly again sometime soon. So I try to keep y'all updated and keep you posted. Like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell game for more special and featured content. This your boy CJ Robinson Jr. I apologize for the confrontation live stream, y'all, but hell, it, it shit happens sometimes. CJ signing out. Less people nowadays just don't have knowledge. Deuces.